Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim again. I'm still working at Alina Health Cancer Institute at Abbott Northwestern Hospital in Minneapolis. Today, we will discuss immunotherapy. Immunotherapy has changed the landscape of cancer treatment. It is less toxic, more effective, and once the patient responded, the duration of response is much longer than chemotherapy. However, because there are many different kind of the immunotherapy drugs, patients or even cancer care providers get confused about which drug is best for them. In this lecture, I like to discuss the mechanism of immunotherapy and uh, compare the uh, different kind of immunotherapy drugs in terms of uh, response rate or durational response and the uh, overall survival. Thank you for watching. I would like to go over the human immune system before we discuss the immunotherapy. The immune system is a complex network of cells, proteins, chemicals that protect our body against the germs or cancer cells while protecting our own cells. There are two kinds, innate and adaptive immune system. As the name implies, the innate immune system is the defense system since birth like a skin, mucous membrane, mucose, uh, saliva tears, sweats, gastric acid, and the bile. For example, gastric acid kills the germs in the, uh, in the food, in the stomach. And inflammation is the part of the immune system. The infective, our own cells, release cytokines attracting and activating macrophages, dendritic cells, mast cells, histocytes, which lead death of infected our own cells so that the infection doesn't spread in the uh, in our body and we have a complement system a special protein the complements directly make a hole on the plasma membrane of germs and attack those germs for other immune cells to attract and attack them and there are uh, cells uh, of immune uh, innate immunity such as nk natural killer cells macrophages granulocytes, master cells, and the dendritic cells. The adaptive immune system is an acquired specific immune system against each particular germs or cancer cells. The cells that carry out the adaptive immune responses are two lymphocytes, B lymphocyte, or we call it B cells, which involved in the humoral immunity, and the T cells, or T lymphocytes, involving in cell-mediated immunity. The activated B cells secrete antibodies, which are immunoglobulins, which circulate and bind the antigens of foreign cells like germs, cancer cells, and they inactivate and damage them. The T lymphocytes, T cells, can directly attack and kill foreign cells. There are two kinds of T cells directly involved uh, the foreign cell killing, which are called the effector cells. CD positive, uh, CD8 positive cytotoxic cells and the CD4 positive helper T cells. And there are memory T cells and the regular T cells. The memory T cells memorize those germs which intruded our body. And when they come back later on, we immediately recognize and then are prepared to attack quickly. And the regular T cells involve in the, uh, protecting our own cells because we don't like our have our own T cells attack our own cells. The foreign cells like germs or cancer cells are attacked and are killed mainly by CD8 positive cells. That's why we call it cytotoxic T cells. And the CD4 positive cells help cytotoxic CD8 positive T cells and the B cells. Please note the activated T cells can attack not only foreign cells, but also our own cells. So we have the immune checkpoint system uh, help T cells distinguish our own cells from foreign cells and that uh, inhibit those T cells attack on our own cells. All those uh, cells involved in the innate and the adaptive immunities are produced uh, in the bone marrow as a hematopoietic stem cells. 
and the, uh, those mast cells, granulocytes, macrophages, NK cells are uh, uh, cells attacking those germs or even cancer cells. And the complement proteins are released, synthesized and released from the liver. And the adoptive immun immunity is a little bit different. Uh, we studied that there are two kinds of cells involved in the adaptive uh, immune system, the B cells and the T cells. The B cells also uh, released from the bone marrow. After they released, they enter the lymphocytes and become uh, activated B cells. And they produce uh, antibodies attacking those uh, cancer cells or germs. But T cells are a little bit different. They, those premature uh, progenitor T cells are produced in the bone marrow and released, and then they enter the thymus as a thymocyte. In the thymus, they mature. And then after they matured, they enter the lymphocytes to be activated, then released from the uh, lymphocyte as an activated T cells then those activated T cells attack the foreign cells. We studied that T cells are mainly involved in the killing of foreign cells like uh, cancer cells or germs. How they are activated? Well, uh, dendritic cells is an important antigen presenting cells. The dendritic cells find those intruding germs and uh, approach them and uh, kill them, catch them and kill them. It's swallowed up and uh, chopped them off to a very small fragments. And then these dendritic cells present those chopped off fragments of germs or cancer cell, cancer proteins to the uh, uh, inactivated uh, T cells. These dendritic cells, uh, antigen presenting cells, uh, present those antigen like a foreign uh, germs or cancer proteins uh, to the uh, T cells. It's not activated yet. And also the B7 protein on the uh, uh, surface of dendritic cells binds to the uh, CD28 uh, on the surface of T cells. Then the T cells are activated and they start to attack the cancer cells, germs, and even uh, our own normal cells. So the T cell activation has to be counterbalanced by immune checkpoint. Otherwise, the T cells will attack our own cells. So this immune checkpoints is a crucial for self tolerance. T cells find and they destroy foreign cells, but let normal cell pass after checking them through the immune checkpoints. The known immune checkpoints include PD-1, PD-L1, CTLA-4, and the LAG-3. PD-1 stands for Programmed Death-1, PD-L1, Programmed Death Ligand-1, CTLA-4, Cytotoxic T Lymphocyte Antigen-4, LAG stands for Lymphocyte Activation Gene-3. Uh, Dr. Honzo uh, in Kyoto University discovered the PD-1 and the Dr. Allison in uh, MD Anderson Cancer Center in Texas discovered the CTL4 and they received the uh, Nobel Prize in Physiology in 2018. Please look at these pictures. We studied that dendritic cells, uh, which is antigen presenting cells, present those antigen to the uh, T cells and also the B7 on its surface bind the CD28 on the surface of T cells. Then T cells, boom, uh, it's activated. Then as soon as it's activated the, uh, through the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, PD1 is moved to the surface of the cells CDLA4 and the LA, LAG3 are the same, and then expressed on the surface as you see PDL, PD1, CTLA4, 
and the LAG3. The PD1 on the T cells bind the PDL1 on the normal cells, and uh, which down regulate the T cells and the kind of inactivate so the T cell cannot attack uh, our own cells. Please look at these pictures. Now, this T cells are activated, so the PD1 uh, is moved to the surface on the T cells. And these activated T cells having PD1 on the surface binds the PDL1 on the surface of our own cells. So once it binds, oh, it's good, you passed. So the, uh, the T cells let these um, normal cells travel in the, uh, in the blood. Well, but cancer cells don't have the PDL1. So these activated T cells having PD1 like to check these cancer cells are own cells or not. Well, these cancer cells have no PDL1. Oh, it's, this is not our own cells. And then these T cells attacked through the releasing that uh, perforin or granzyme, those kind of toxic uh, enzymes to kill these cancer cells. But problem is, certain tumor cells express PDL1. So they can uh, get away from this T cells attack. The CTLA4 also works as an immune checkpoint similar to the PD1 and the PDL1 axis. The activated T cells now having CTLA4 on the surface uh, binds the uh, B7 protein on the normal cells. So once they check these normal cells have a B7 which bind to CTLA4, then the T cells down regulated, kind of deactivated, and let this normal cell pass. But the cancer cells normally have no B7 protein, uh, cannot uh, get away because T cell, activate T cell, check if these cancer cells have a B7 protein or not. So it don't have, they don't have it and they kill them. But again, the certain tumor cells express B7 protein. So that's the problem. LAG3, the lymphocyte activation GN3 is another immune checkpoint which exert negative effect on activated T cells. Binding of LAG3 of the activated T cells to the uh, uh, major histocompatibility complex type 2 of normal cells leads inhibition of antigen-specific CD4 T cell function against cancer cells or chronic viral infection, resulting in CD4 uh, T cell exhaustion. Another mechanism is certain proteins produced by normal liver cells or uh, nuclear cells, such as firinogen-like one, FL, FGL1, liver sinusoid endothelactin, LS-sectin, and the galactin-3 bind the uh, uh, LAG-3 on the surface of activated T cells and they exert a negative effect, kind of deactivated, so they can't attack the uh, normal cells. However, certain tumor cells express major histocompatibility complex or produce the, uh, those special proteins, fibrinogen like 1LS actin or galactin 3 proteins, so they can get away. That's the problem. So, if we have PD1 inhibitors like this picture or PDL1 inhibitors, like this one, then even though cancer cells may have PDL1, uh, it will not work because it blocks the, the PD1, PDL1 axis formation. So the T cell continue to uh, be in activation status and attack the cancer cells, killing them. The PD1 inhibitors include pembrolizumab, the uh, Keytruda. Nivolumab, Optivo, Semiplimab, 
Liptayo, those Tolimap, uh, Jem Perley, and the relative family map, Zinz, Zinitz, those are uh, PD-1 inhibitors, antibodies, monoclonal antibodies. And the PD-L1 inhibitors include uh, Solizumab, Tecentric, Durvalumab, Infinzi, Avelumab, Bavensio. Those are PD-L1 inhibitors. Similarly, uh, by blocking CTLA-4, it prevents the uh, uh, B7 on the surface of cancer cell binding the CTL4, and then T cell will not be deactivated and then attack the cancer cells. The CTLA4 inhibitors include Iplimumab, your boy, and Trimelimumab, uh, in judo. LAG3 inhibitors, the same thing, uh, it blocked the LAG3 and the uh, cancer cells major histocompatibility complex cannot bind the LAG3. And even though the cancer cells produce a fibrinogen like one protein or levocinosoidectin and the galactin-3, they cannot bind the uh, uh, LAG3 because these inhibitors block them. The LAG3 inhibitor include, includes the uh, relatilimab. And the recently, um, the combination of PD-1 inhibitor and the LAG3 inhibitor came out to the market. The PD-L1 inhibitor, nivolumab, mixed with the uh, uh, relatilimab, the LAG3 inhibitors are marketed under the name of Opdualog. In order to protect our own self, we also have the regulatory T cells in addition to the immune checkpoints. The regulatory T cells used to be called the suppressor T cells because they suppress and downregulate induction and proliferation of effector T cells. The regulatory T cells maintain tolerance to self antigen, our own cells, and to prevent autoimmune disease. How they do that? The regular T cells basically compete the uh, effector T cells like a cytotoxic or a helper T cells uh, to prevent the effector T cells activation. Like effector T cells, regular T cells also have a TCLA4 on the surface. And we know in order to have the T cell uh, activation, the effector T cells has to encounter with the dendritic cells, uh, antigen presenting cells, by binding the B7 of the uh, dendritic cells with the TCLA4 of the effector T cells. So, this regulatory T cells, TCLA, uh, snatch the B7 of the uh, dendritic cells and uh, prevent the uh, uh, effector T cell binding B7 of the APC. So, it prevent the activation. The regulatory T cells also uh, secrete the uh, inhibitory cytokines like a transforming growth factor beta or IL-10 and even uh, cytotoxic enzymes like a granzyme B all to uh, prevent in the inhibit the T cell activation. In tumor environment, large number of T regulatory cell infiltration is associated with a poor prognosis. We can understand because uh, this regular T cells uh, is a kind of an inhibitory to the T cell activation. But some other cancers, like a colorectal cancer or follicular uh, lymphoma, the high number of regular T cells indicate a good prognosis. So we still don't know exactly how it works. Now, let's move on to the clinical aspect of immunotherapy. The response rate of immunotherapy is not very high, about 30%, and the toxicity may occur. So there are needs to predict the response rate. We just like to know on which type of cancers the immunotherapy is most effective. Most informations were obtained through clinical studies which we will discuss later. 
However, there are no good tumor markers predicting the response to immune checkpoint inhibitors. The only available method predicting the response is to measure the PDL1 expression level of tumor cells. In general, the higher PDL1 levels, the better response rates. But the response rates are not consistent as some cancer patients do not respond well with the high levels of PDL1 expression levels while the other patients respond well despite low or no negative PDL1. In non-small cell lung cancer, tumors with the driver mutations such as EGFR mutation, ALK, ROS1 uh, gene rearrangement do not respond well to immune checkpoint immunotherapy. Those tumors are treated with a targeted therapy first because targeted therapy produces better response than uh, immune checkpoint immunotherapy. If immunotherapy was used first, severe toxicity may occur with a subsequent targeted therapy. Interestingly, immune-related ad adverse events may be associated with a better uh, outcome. The immune-related adverse events are associated with improved response and the survival in the head and neck cancer. And the ability to resume immune checkpoint immunotherapy after an episode of severe uh, immune-related uh, side effects is associated with a better prognosis, of, prognosis and survival in metastatic melanoma. In non-small cell lung cancer, Patients with a grade 2 or less immune-related adverse events have a better outcome, but the patients with a severe uh, toxicity, grade 3 or higher, prognosis was poorer. Now we know the FDA approved the uh, uh, PDL1 expression level in predicting the response rate of to the uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors, there are two different tests to measure the PDL1 levels of tumor cells, and the scores are reported as 0 to 100. Tumor proportion score, TPS, is usually used for non-small cell lung cancer. The formula comes from PDL1 positive tumor cell divided by PDL1 positive and the PDL1 negative tumor cells times 100. There is another uh, scoring test. It's called the combined positive scores (CPS). These are used for other uh, cancer types like a head and neck, esophageal, gastric, cervical, and the breast cancers. The PDL1 positive cells, including tumor cells, lymphocytes, and the PDL1 positive macrophages are divided by PDL1 positive and the PDL1 negative tumor cells times 100. So the combined positive scores in extreme case can be higher than 100. Please look at the pictures. Those are uh, those brown uh, color stained cells are PDL1 positive cells and uh, not stained cells appear to well negative uh, tumor cells. When you look at this tumor tissue, about 80% are positive. So they're reported as PDL1 uh, uh, TPS, TPS score 80%. And this one, PDL1 stain negative cells are more than positive cells. So it's tumor proportion scores is about 20%. Now, let's study each cancer type where immunotherapy is effective and uh, indicated. First, non-small cell lung cancer. Pembrolizumab, Keytruda monotherapy is indicated as an adjuvant therapy after surgical resection in stage 1b with the tumor size 4 cm or larger, stage 2 and the stage 3a, regardless of PDL1 score. When it compared with the placebo in Keynote 091 study, median disease-free survival was prolonged to 59 months versus 35 months in placebo group. 
and the adverse event was 34% in uh, pembrolizumab group versus 26% in placebo, mainly with hypertension, pneumonia, and the diarrhea. Pembrolizumab monotherapy is indicated as the first-line therapy for metastatic non-small cell lung cancer with a PDL1 score 50 or higher. Tumor has to be negative for EGFR mutation (ALK) uh, rearrangement. Oval response rate is 45%, and the median over survival over two years 26.3 months. Adverse event was less than uh, chemotherapy, 27% versus 53%. When the PDL1 score is only one or higher. Pembrolizumab monotherapy still can be used, but the median oval survival is slightly less than those patients whose tumor is PDL1 score over 50%. When the PDL1 was negative, still pembrolizumab is used in combination with the chemotherapy, providing median oval survival 22 months but the uh, grade three or higher adverse event was high, 67%. In addition to the pembrolizumab, nivolumab Optivo is also commonly used for the non-small cell lung cancer. Optivo is used as a neoadjuvant therapy before surgery with a platinum doublet uh, chemotherapy for stage 1b, 2, and the 3a, regardless of PDL1 score. Nivolumab is uh, given with a chemotherapy for three cycles before surgery. When it compared with the chemotherapy alone, the uh, event-free survival was prolonged to 32 months versus 21 months. Surprisingly, the pathological complete response rate was 24% in nivolumab group versus only 2% in chemotherapy group. And the adverse event was slightly lower, 36% versus 37%. So nivolumab didn't increase the incidence of adverse event or impede the feasibility of surgery. Nivolumab monotherapy is also uh, used as a second-line therapy for metastatic non-small cell lung cancer after disease progressed over platinum chemotherapy. When it compared with the docetaxel, it improved the survival in both squamous cell and adenocarcinoma. Nivolumab Optivo is combined with the Iplumumab Yorboy and used as the first-line therapy for metastatic non-small cell lung cancer when PDL1 score is one or higher. The median over survival was 17 uh, months. Nivolumab, ipilimumab, and the two cycles of platinum chemotherapy is also indicated for first-line therapy for metastatic non-small cell lung cancer, regardless of PDL1 score. But the oval survival was not too impressive, 14 months. Semiplimab, litio monotherapy is indicated as a first-line therapy for metastatic non-small cell lung cancer, whose PDL1 score is a 50 or higher. When it was compared with the uh, chemotherapy, objective response rate was 37% versus 21%, and the median over survival doubled at 22 months versus 14 months, and the adverse event was lower, 28% versus 39%. Semiplimab combination combined with the uh, chemotherapy is also indicated as a first-line therapy for metastatic cancer, regardless of PDL1 score. When it was compared with the chemo, objective response was doubled 43%, and the median over survival 22 months versus 13 months, but adverse event was higher at 44%. Duvalumab, Infinzi, monotherapy is used as an adjuvant therapy for one year after concurrent chemoradiation therapy for stage three non-small cell lung cancer regardless of PDL1. When it compared with the chemo uh, with no adjuvant therapy, 
Median over survival was impressively prolonged to 48 months versus 29 months. And the uh, uh, adverse event was not too much different, 30% versus 26%, most commonly pneumonia. Tuvalumab was combined with the tremelimumab and the chemotherapy as a first line for metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. The objective response rate was 46%, but the median over survival was 14 months, and the adverse event was higher at 52%. Atezolizumab, tecentric monotherapy, was used as an adjuvant therapy after surgical resection and the adjuvant platinum chemotherapy for stage 1b, 2, and 3a. Those patients have their tumor PDL1 score 1% or higher. Atezolizumab uh, adjuvant therapy was given for one year. When it was compared with the best support care, median disease-free survival was not reached, and at five years, over survival was 85%, very impressive, and the adverse event was only 11%. Atezolizumab combined with the chemotherapy and the bevacizumab is used as a first-line therapy for metastatic non-small cell lung cancer regardless of PDL1. And it was compared with the uh, uh, chemo and the bevacizumab without atezolizumab. Objective response rate was 64% and uh, median over survival 19 months versus 15 months. Adverse event was higher at 56% versus 48%. The atezolizumab and the duvalumab are used with the chemotherapy for small cell lung cancer extensive stage as induction therapy. Atezolizumab or duvalumab are given with the carboplatin etoposide for four cycles, followed by uh, immunotherapy maintenance atezolizumab or duvalumab. When it compared with the chemotherapy alone, objective response rate was about 60% or higher, and uh, uh, median oval survival was 12 or 13 months versus 10 months. The adverse event was 57% to 60%. Melanoma is a good target of immunotherapy. Pembrolizumab monotherapy is used as an adjuvant therapy for one year after surgical resection. For stage 2b, 2c, stage 2b means tumor depth is over 2 mm with ulcer. Stage 2c means tumor depth over 4 mm without lymph node metastasis. It prolonged the uh, relapse-free survival. It also used for the uh, adju as an adjuvant therapy for resected stage 3A, B, and C. Stage 3 means regional lymph node metastasis. It prolonged the uh, five-year uh, relapse-free survival to 55%. Pembrolizumab monotherapy is widely used as a first-line therapy for metastatic melanoma. When it compared with the ipilimumab in Kino. 006 studies, the objective response rate was 33%, with the uh, median over survival impressively prolonged to uh, 39 months versus 17 months, with a uh, mild adverse event at 13%. The volume of monotherapy is also used as the adjuvant therapy for one year for resected stage 3 and the 4. When it compared with the ipilimumab, it prolonged the five-year relapse-free survival to 50%. Vivalumab monotherapy is indicated as the second-line therapy for metastatic melanoma after the disease progressed over ipilimumab or BREP inhibitor when the BREP uh, B600 positive. When it compared with the uh, chemotherapy, the objective response rate was 27%, but there is no difference in median over survival though. Nivalumab is combined with the ipilimumab and used as the first-line therapy for metastatic melanoma when PDL1 score is 1 or higher. When it compared with the platinum, 
The objective response rate was 36%, but the median over survival was not very uh, impressive, 17 months. But now, uh, nivolumab is combined with a relatilumab uh, and is marketed under the name of opodualog. It is used as the first-line therapy for metastatic melanoma. When it compared with the nivolumab alone in relativity 047 uh, studies, overall response rate was impressively 43%, and the uh, median overall survival was not reached, while the nivolumab uh, median survival was 34 months, and a pretty uh, a tolerable adverse event at 19%. Uh, when the metastatic melanoma has BRAF V600 mutation, then atezolizumab was combined with a bemurafenib a BRAF inhibitor and a covimetinib a MAC inhibitor. When it combined, when it compared with uh, bemurafenib and the covimetinib without atezolizumab, the atezolizumab group improved the uh, median over survival to 39 months, pretty impressive, versus 26 months. Now, gastric, gastroesophageal junction or esophageal cancer. For adenocarcinoma, mostly gastric GE junction or lower esophageal adenocarcinoma, nivolumab combined with the chemotherapy is quite effective. In all patients, oval survival is about 14 months. But when the PDL1 score is over 5, 5 or higher, the median survival was 14.4 months. And if PDL1 is 1 or higher, 13.8 months. So the FDA approved nivolumab combined with the chemotherapy, usually Falfox or Zilox for gastric GE junction or esophageal adenocarcinoma, regardless of PDL1. For adenocarcinoma, pembrolizumab monotherapy is also useful. It's especially good when the PDL1 CPS score is a 10 or higher. The median over survival was impressive, 17.4 months although the objective response rate was low, 25%. This was studied in Keynote 062 trial, but FDA has not approved this uh, pembrolizumab monotherapy yet as of July 2027, but I know it will be approved pretty soon. And the adverse event was only 17% compared to chemotherapy group 70%. This pembrolizumab is also combined with a chemotherapy for esophageal or G-junction uh, squamous or endocarcinoma. It's used as the first-line metastatic or local advanced esophageal or a seaward type 1. Seaward type 1 is kind of a proximal uh, G-junction tumor not amenable to surgery or chemoradiation therapy, regardless of PDL1 score. It was compared with the chemotherapy alone in Keynote 590 trial. Especially when the PDL1 score is over a 10 or higher, objective response rate was 45% and the median overall survival 14 months. In all patients, median survival was 12.4 months but the uh, adverse uh, event was high, 72%. FDA approved pembrolizumab combined with chemotherapy for metastatic local advanced esophageal or G-junction tumor. Seward 1, tumor with epicenter two, 1 to 5 centimeter above G-junction, regardless of PDE11 score for both esophageal and the squamous cell carcinoma. For HER2 positive gastric or G junction uh, tumor adenocarcinoma, pembrolizumab 
is combined with the trastuzumab and the chemotherapy. This was studied in the landmark chemo Keynote 811 trials. Amazingly, objective response rate was 74%, and the complete pathologic response rate was seen in 11.3%, and the median uh, over survival is not reached yet. And the uh, adverse event, uh, grade 3 or higher, was seen in 57% of patients. For squamous cell carcinoma, squamous cell esophageal cancer, nivolumab monotherapy can be used as a second-line therapy after disease progressed over platinum chemotherapy with a median over survival of about 11 months. Nivolumab was combined with chemotherapy and epilomumab, which was uh, compared with chemotherapy alone for squamous cells esophageal cancer. And uh, when the nivolumab and chemotherapy was compared with the chemotherapy, the overall survival was about 14 months versus 10 months. When the nivolumab was combined with the ipilimumab, the overall survival was also about 14 months. The adverse event was about 40%. I would like to introduced the nivolumab adjuvant therapy for squamous cell and the adenocarcinoma of esophageal or G-junction tumor. Nivolumab was given as adjuvant therapy for four year, one year for residual disease after initial neoadjuvant chemoradiation therapy followed by surgery. It was given regardless, regardless of PDL1 and the median disease-free survival was over 22 months versus 11 months. Very uh, impressive. And the minimal uh, adverse event at 30, 13%. Immunotherapy is widely used for patients with renal cell carcinoma. Pembrolizumab monotherapy is indicated as an adjuvant therapy for intermediate high or high risk of recurrence after nephrectomy or metastasectomy, regardless of PDL1 score. It was compared with a placebo in Keynote 564 trial, and the two year survival was 97% versus 93.5%, and the severe toxicity was seen in about 30% of patients. For metastatic renal cell carcinoma, Pembrolizumab is combined with the uh, excitinib in LITA. It's used as the first line therapy, regardless of PDL1 score. When it was compared with the sunitinib, objective response rate was 61% and the five year survival 42%. Pretty impressive. But the adverse event was seen in 76% of patients. Recently, pembrolizumab was combined with a lenvatinib, Lenvimar, in uh, clear trials. It's used as the first-line therapy for advanced or metastatic renal cell carcinoma. This study is kind of interesting. The pembrolizumab was combined with a lenvatinib and was compared with the everolimus with the lenvatinib versus sunitinib. Objective response rate was 71% highest, and the median over survival was not reached at 33 months. But statistically, pembrolizumab with the lenvatinib was a superior to ebolimus with the lenvatinib or sunitinib. But the adverse event was seen in 82%, pretty high. And the nivolumab is commonly used for renal cell carcinoma as well. Nivolumab is combined with the ipilimumab as a first-line therapy. When it was com compared with the sunitinib in Checkmate 214 trial, objective response rate was 42%. And the median over survival uh, was 
more effective but is still not reached yet. It's especially more effective uh, than tyrosine and kinase inhibitors in sarcomatoid renal cell carcinoma and the adverse event was seen in 46%. Evolumib also, also combined with a carbozantinib, carbometics, used as the first-line therapy for advanced or metastatic renal cell carcinoma. When it was compared with the sunitinib, objective response rate was 56%, and uh, one year over survival 86 percent again the adverse event was high 75 percent now avelumab is also combined with the axetinib in lighter as a first-line th therapy for metastatic renal cell carcinoma when it was compared with the sunitinib objective response rate was 60 percent not bad and the Median over survival not reached at three years. But again, adverse event was seen in 71%. So the low risk, low burden patients or frail patients, pembrolizumab or nivolumab monotherapy is more suitable. But its FDA has not approved for the monotherapy with pembrolizumab or nivolumab. Now, bladder cancer, urothelial carcinoma. Pembrolizumab monotherapy is indicated as a second-line therapy for unresectable or metastatic disease after progressed over platinum-containing chemotherapy or progressed within 12 months of neoadjuvant or adjuvant chemotherapy. Or, as a first-line therapy if patients are unable to have platinum chemotherapy, regardless of PDL1. Cisplatin ineligible patients include the patients who have renal failure with creatine clearance less than 60, hearing loss, or ECOG 2 or higher. When it was compared with the Texane in Keynote 045 trials, objective response rate was about 30%, but once they responded, the median duration of response is about 30 months versus 4 months in a chemotherapy group, very impressive. And the median oval survival was 10.1 versus seven months. And the adverse event was seen in 15%. Pembrolizumab monotherapy is also indicated for non-muscle invasive bladder cancer with a carcinoma in situ when they are recurrent despite intravesical BCGs and it and the patients are not eligible or do not want cystectomy. It's a single arm study in Keynote 0.557 trials, and the complete response rate was 41%. Once they responded, median duration of response was 16 months, and the adverse event was seen in 13%, mainly arthralgia and the hyponatremia. Pembrolizumab is combined with the enfortumab vedotin, potsiv. Enfortumab vedotin is an uh, antibody drug conjugates antibody. It's used as the first-line therapy for local advanced or metastatic disease not eligible for cisplatin chemotherapy. Object response rate was about 70% with a complete response rate 12%. Very impressive. Once they responded, median duration of response is over two months, and the median over survival was 26.1 months, but the adverse event was seen in 64%, mainly high lipase, fatigue, and the rash. But patients were excluded when they have CNS brain metastasis or grade two or higher neuropathy or uh, have or uncontrolled diabetes. Nivolumab monotherapy is also indicated as an adjuvant therapy after cystectomy when they have a high risk of recurrence. For example, after cystectomy, the residual tumor is T3 or 4 or lymph node positive. If patients did not have a new adjuvant therapy, residual tumor T2 is included and the treatment started within four months 
or one year, regardless of PDL1. When it was compared with the placebo, median disease free survival was 20.8 months. And in patients who have whose tumor has a PDL1 uh, score one or higher, the median disease free survival was not reached yet, still going on. And the median oval survival was not reached at 31 months. Very impressive. And the adverse event was seen in 18%. Development monotherapies indicated as a second line therapy for metastatic or local advanced disease, local advanced disease progressed over uh, platinum chemotherapy or disease progression within 12 months of neoadjuvant or adjuvant chemotherapy. Objective response rate was 20% and the median duration response 10 months. Avaluab monotherapy is used as a maintenance immunotherapy after initial chemotherapy for metastatic, breast can uh, metastatic bladder cancer. Platinum containing chemotherapy are given four to six cycles and when the disease did not progress or responded then Avaluab monotherapy is given as a maintenance until disease progression or toxicity prohibits using the development. Median over survival was 21.4 months versus 14 months when patients did not have development, and the adverse event was seen about 47%. Immunotherapy is effective for metastatic or unresectable head and neck squamous cell carcinoma. In a landmark study, Keynote 48048, pembrolizumab monotherapy was compared with a combination of pembrolizumab and the chemotherapy versus cetuximab with the chemotherapy. Pembrolizumab monotherapy improved the oval survival only in PDL1 positive patients, PDL1 score 1 or higher. Pembrolizumab combined with the chemotherapy group improved the oval survival regardless of PDL1, including PDL1 0 negative patients. All this pembrolizumab monotherapy or combined with a chemotherapy are better than uh, cetuximab group. For example, median over survival was 12.3 months in pembrolizumab monotherapy group, 13.6 months in uh, pembrolizumab with a chemotherapy group and 10.4 months in cetuximab with a chemotherapy group. Adverse event was seen in 55% in pembrolizumab monotherapy versus over 80% in pembrolizumab or cetuximab combined with the chemotherapy groups. Nivolumab monotherapy is indicated as a second-line therapy for recurrent or metastatic head and neck cancer, regardless of PDL1. When it was compared with the cetuximab or cetuximab plus chemotherapy, the objective response rate was 13% versus 6% and the median over survival 7.5 versus 5.1 months. For unresectable malignant pleural mesothelioma, combination of nivolumab and the ipilimumab is indicated. When it compared with the chemotherapy alone, Objective response rate was 40%, no difference. Median progression free survivals, about seven months, no difference. But median over survival was prolonged in nivolumab combined with the ipilimumab uh, group, 18 months versus 14 months. And the adverse event was similar, 30%. For unresectable Merkel cell carcinoma, we have uh, three choices, avalumab monotherapy, pembrolizumab monotherapy, retifanlimab monotherapy. Among these, pembrolizumab and the retifanlimab have a better objective response rate, over 50%, while nivolumab uh, group is about 33%. Uh, 33 but the median over survivals are all good, over 12 months. For unresectable cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma, Pembrolizumab monotherapy or semipolymab monotherapy are indicated. In this case, semipolymab 
looks better than pembrolizumab with the over response rate 47% versus 34%, although it was not a uh, one-to-one -one, uh, uh, comparison. And the median over survival are both over six months. A median duration of response is over six months, not reached. For unresectable basal cell carcinoma, semiplimate monotherapy is indicated as a second-line therapy after a HDOG inhibitor failure. Now, gynecological cancers. Immunotherapy is indicated for metastatic endometrial or cervical cancer, but somehow ovarian cancer does not respond to immunotherapy. Pembrolizumab monotherapy is indicated as a second-line uh, therapy for advanced MSI high or MMR deficient endometrial carcinoma, whose disease progressed following prior systemic chemotherapy, or who are not candidate for curative surgery or radiation therapy. Objective response rate was impressive, about 50%, and once they responded, median duration of response is about 20 months, and the uh, uh, adverse event was a low 11%. Pembrolizumab combined with the lenvatinib is also indicated as a second-line therapy for advanced endometrial carcinoma that is not MSI high or deficient MMR. The objective response rate was about 30%, with the median progression-free survival about 7 months and the median over survival 17.4 months, but the adverse event was high at 89%. For cervical carcinoma, either uh, squamous cell or uh, adenocarcinoma, pembrolizumab monotherapy is indicated as a second-line therapy for metastatic disease when uh, PDL1 score is one or higher after chemo failure. Objective response rate is about 14.3%. Once they responded, the duration of response is over six months. Pembrolizumab combined with the chemotherapy with or without bevacizumab is indicated as a first-line therapy for metastatic or recurrent disease when the PDL1 score is one or higher. When it was compared with the chemotherapy, objective response rate was almost 70% and the median over survival 28.6 months versus 16 months with the chemotherapy alone. And the adverse event was about same, about 30%. Chemotherapy has a no role in treatment of hepatocellular carcinoma. They are not effective, but the immunotherapy is. As a first-line therapy for unresectable or metastatic hepatocellular carcinoma, combination of atezolizumab and the bevacizumab, or tuvalumab with the uh, tremelimumab is indicated. The combination of atezolizumab and bevacizumab was compared with a uh, sorapanib in IM Brave 150 trial. Objective response rate was 28% versus 12%, and the median over survival 19.2 months versus 13.4 months, and the adverse event was compatible at about 40%. The combination of tuvalumab and the tremelimumab was compared with the devalumab monotherapy and the sorafenib monotherapy in Himalaya trials. The objective response rate was 20% in combined group versus 19% in devalumab group and 5% in uh, sorafenib group. Once they responded, the median duration of response was 22.3 months in combination group versus 16.8 months in Duvalumab and 18.4 months in Serapinib. Quite, ex, uh, quite um, impressive here. But the median over survival was 16.4, 16.6 months in a combination and the Duvalumab group, and the 13.4 months in Serapinib group. But at three years, the combination group's over survival was 31%, and 25% uh, in development monotherapy and 20% in the serapinib group. 
Sub-analysis showed that over-survival of combination of Devalumab and the Trimelimumab was superior than Sorafenib group. At this point, the uh, FDA approved this combination therapy in October 2022. The overall survival of a development monotherapy was neither superior or inferior and nor inferior to serafinib. The adverse uh, event rate was comparable about 50%. When patients received the serafinib as a first-line therapy and disease progressed, Nivolumab combined with the Iplumumab is used as a second-line therapy. It was uh, compared depending on the dosage. Patients received either Nivolumab 1 mg per kg plus Iplumumab 3 mg per kg for total four cycles followed by Nivolumab maintenance. The other group was reversed. Nivolumab 3 mg per kg and Iplomumab 1 mg per kg. And another group was given less frequently. At this three, uh, comparing these three groups in Checkmate 040 trials, the group who received the Nivolumab 1 mg per kg and Iplomumab 3 mg per kg showed the highest objective response rate at 32% and uh, median over survival impressive 23 months. But uh, the patients group who received the nivolumab 3 and the ipilimumab 1 mg per kg had median over survival 13 months. But the adverse event was higher in uh, uh, nivolumab 1 mg and the ipilimumab 3 mg group at 53% versus uh, 30%. Pembrolizumab monotherapy is also used as a second-line therapy after disease progression over sorafenib. The objective response rate was 18%, but once they responded, the median duration of response was impressive 21 months, and the median over survival was 13.2 months, and the adverse event was lower 24%. Cholangiocarcinoma, we used to use uh, cisplatin with a gemcitabine. But in this, uh, September 2022, FDA approved combination of Dervalumab with a chemotherapy for uh, cholangiocarcinoma based on TOPES-1 trial, where Dervalumab was combined with a cisplatin and gemcitabine and given for eight cycles, followed by the volume of maintenance. Objective response rate was 27% versus 19% of chemotherapy only group. And the median progression free survival 7.2 versus 5.7 months. And the median over survival was 12.8 months versus 11.5 months. And the common uh, adverse event was anemia, neutropenia, nausea, constipation. And the immune mediated adverse event was seen in 13%. Immunotherapy is effective for mismatch repair deficient DMMR or microsatellite instability high MSIH solid tumors, including colorectal and the endometrial cancers. Pembrolizumab monotherapy was approved as a first-line therapy for deficient MMR or MSIH unresectable or metastatic colorectal cancer, when it was compared with a chemotherapy with or without bevacizumab or cetuximab, objective response rate was over uh, 30% with a 10% complete response rate. And the median progression free survival was over 16 months, and the three-year over survival was over 61%, quite uh, impressive, with the uh, uh, reasonably low adverse event uh, rate of 22%. Pembrolizumab is also indicated as a second-line therapy for deficient MMR or MSIH unresectable metastatic, any kind of solid tumors, 
that have progressed over prior treatment and who have no satisfactory alternative treatment options. Object to response rate over 30%. Once they responded, amazingly, the duration of response was 63 months over five years with an uh, adverse event rate 11%. Evolumab monotherapies also indicated as a second-line therapy for deficient MMR or MSIH metastatic colorectal cancer progressed over previous chemotherapy. Objective response rate was merely 60%, and uh, uh, over 80% of patients were alive at 15 months with a reasonable uh, adverse event rate at 32%. Evolumab was combined with the Ipilimumab and used as a second-line therapy for the same situation. Colorectal cancer progressed over prior chemotherapy. And the object response rate was even higher at 65% with a complete response rate 13%. And the, once, they reach, uh, once they responded, the duration responded uh, over survival was not, or not reached meaning patients still uh, living with a reasonable uh, adverse event rate 32%. But 13% of patients discontinued this therapy because of severe toxicity. Dostalimab, Gemperly monotherapy is also indicated as a second line therapy for metastatic uh, MS, the, uh, deficient MMR or MS IH solid tumors of any kind that have progressed over prior treatment and who have no satisfactory alternative treatment options. Object response rate is over 40%. Once they responded, duration of response was about three years, impressive, with a low adverse event rate about 16%. Especially dostalimab uh, was approved uh, for a second-line therapy for deficient MMR, metastatic or advanced endometrial carcinoma progressed over prior chemotherapy. Object response rate is over 45% with a 16% complete response rate. And the once they responded, median duration of response was not reached at over two years people still living. So why we don't why don't we test the tumors for mismatch repair deficient in the microsatellite high status? We should. Any tumors that have high tumor mutational burden, TMBH, can be treated with the pembrolizumab monotherapy. It's used as a second-line therapy for unresectable or metastatic solid tumors. The indication is tumor mutational burden level 10 or higher mutation per uh, MB, megabase, that has progressed following prior, prior treatment and who have no satisfactory alternative treatment options. Objective response rate was about 30%. Once they responded, the duration of response was over two years with a, a minimal adverse event rate at 11%. So all solid tumor patients who has no other treatment options must have this uh, the tumor bur a mutational burden uh, molecular test. In general, immunotherapy is not effective on breast cancer except triple negative breast cancer. Pembrolizumab combined with the chemotherapy is indicated as a neoadjuvant therapy before surgery and the adjuvant therapy after surgery. The landmark study, Keynote 522, uh, compared the uh, pembrolizumab with the chemotherapy for high risk early stage triple negative stage 2 to 3 breast cancer 
followed by pembrolizumab monotherapy as an adjuvant treatment after the surgery. When they are compared with the chemotherapy, the pathological complete response was seen in merely 63%, very high, versus 56% with the chemotherapy alone without pembrolizumab. And the event-free survival at three years was 84.5% in pembrolizumab group versus 76.8% in chemotherapy only group. The adverse event grade three or higher was relatively low at 12.9%. The indication of pembrolizumab uh, adjuvant, neoadjuvant adjuvant therapy included breast cancer tumor size bigger than one, but up to two millimeter, a uh, two centimeter when a uh, plus lymph node involvement, or tumor size bigger than two centimeter regardless of lymph node involvement. And the new adjuvant therapy included pembrolizumab, carboplatin, paclitaxel, or albumin bounded paclitaxel. This neoadjuvant therapy was given four cycles followed by pembrolizumab with the doxorubicin and the cyclophosphamide. I like to mention that this doxorubicin and the cyclophosphamide is given every three weeks, so it's not a every two weeks dose dense AC uh, regimen. Adjuvant therapy, uh, pembrolizumab every three weeks for nine cycles making total one year. And the capsidabine was not allowed, and the surgery was done three to six weeks after the new adjuvant therapy. The pembrolizumab combined with the chemotherapy is also used as a first-line therapy for recurrent unresectable or metastatic triple negative breast cancer when pdl one score is 10 or higher. When it was compared with the chemotherapy in Keynote 355 trials, Objective response rate was 53% versus 41%, and the median over survival was much higher, 23 months versus 16 months, with a comparable adverse event rate, 68-67%. Alveolar soft part sarcoma is a very rare type of sarcoma. In this case, atezolizumab monotherapy is indicated as a first-line therapy for unresectable or metastatic alveolar soft part sarcoma, with the objective response rate was 24%. Immunotherapy is used for the uh, lymphoma, especially Hodgkin's lymphoma. Pembrolizumab monotherapy is indicated as a second-line therapy for relapsed or refractory adult classical Hodgkin's lymphoma patients, or as a third-line children classical Hodgkin's lymphoma relapsed after two, more than two lines of treatment. It was compared with the brentuximab vedotin in Keynote 204 trials. The objective response rate was over 60% versus 50%. And the, once they responded, the median duration of response was 21 months versus 14 months. Adverse event was reasonably low at 16%. Nivolumab monotherapy is indicated as a third-line therapy for classical Hodgkin's lymphoma when progressed after autologous hematopoietic stem cell transplantation and the post-transplant brentuximab vedotin therapy. The objective response rate was still high, 65%, with a 7% complete response rate. The uh, adverse event was 21%. But I'd like to mention that allogeneic uh, stem cell transplantation after nivolumab increases the complication rate, such as graft versus host disease and the mortality. Nivolumab was combined with a brentuximab vedotin as a first-line salvage therapy for relapsed or refractory classical Hodgkin's lymphoma. FDA has not approved yet, but Objective response rate was 85% with a complete response rate of 67% with a reasonable uh, adverse event rate of 
I have no doubt that FDA will approve this nivolumab combined with brentuximab for a relapsed uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Pembrolizumab monotherapy is also indicated as a third-line therapy for primary mediastinal large B-cell lymphoma. Objective response rate was 42% with a 21% complete response rate. So median time for response uh, was about three months, so it should not be used for fast-growing tumor, which in need of urgent site reduction. Once they responded, median duration of response was over four months, still not reached at four, uh, four years. So it is quite impressive with a reasonable adverse event rate, 23%. As I said earlier, the immunotherapy has changed the landscape of cancer treatment. It's quite revolutionary, but we still have some unsolved and the controversial issues. In my opinion, the response rate of immunotherapy is not quite satisfactory. It's about 30% plus minus as we studied earlier. And there are some way to improve the response rate. Glucocorticoids, steroid, dexamethasone or prednisone, which we use widely in cancer treatment, may affect the efficacy of immunotherapy negatively. Glucocorticoids are the first-line therapy for immune-related adverse events. It affects negatively on both innate and adaptive immune system. In particular, glucocorticoids reduce the number of circulating T cells and inhibit T cell activation, which is quite deleterious in cancer treatment. Clinical studies have shown that glucocorticoids, when used with immunotherapy, result in poor outcome and the poor prognosis, such as in non-small cell lung cancer, when the prednisone dose 10 mg or more a day was used, the uh, uh, outcome was worse. Especially, deleterious effects are more evident with the early steroid use. In melanoma, when the ipilimumab was used with the glucocorticoids, the prognosis was worse. However, when the glucocorticoids was mainly used for the uh, treatment of immune-related adverse e uh, event, not in the initial stage of immunotherapy, there was no difference in outcome. Nevertheless, the NCCN and the ASCO allowed the use of glucocorticoids with immune checkpoint immunotherapy. Why? Well, they said it's based on retrospective study showing no difference in survivals. However, it's a retrospective study, not the prospective study. I don't believe it's quite convincing. And the, the timing of uh, immunotherapy may affect the outcome, especially when the immunotherapy was used in uh, earlier stage when the tumor size is small and the tumor burden is low the, resp the prognosis was better. And the, but now we normally use immunotherapy for the metastatic disease when tumor burden is high. So when the tumor burden is too much, I believe we may have to consider debulking surgery before starting immunotherapy. And we do not have good tumor markers predicting uh, uh, response, good response other than PDL1 scores need to have more research in this field. And the immune-related immune adverse events can be serious sometimes. There are some fatal cases were reported. And the duration of immunotherapy is not quite uh, established. In most clinical studies, patients were treated for up to two years. However, in our practice, most patients continue the immunotherapy until disease progressed or they develop toxicity. And the rechallenging with another immunotherapy is possible. After severe immune-related adverse events, we stop the immunotherapy. Some studies have uh, 
shown that rechallenging with the same drugs resulting in higher rates of, uh, of toxicity, 47% in melanoma, 36% in non-small cell lung cancer, but only 11% in renal cell carcinoma. If disease progressed after initial immune checkpoint immunotherapy, rechallenge with a different immuno, uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor is usually not advised. However, no studies have done to uh, address these issues. And the, lastly, the cost of immunotherapy drug is too high. Pembrolizumab, for example, 200 milligram, we give it every three weeks. Drug cost is about $12,000. All others are similar. Ipilimumab is about $30,000. Trimelimumab, $35,000. But the cost of the cost is too high. But the uh, life is so precious, much precious than money. After I completed my work at Abbott Northwestern Hospital in Minneapolis, I wrote a poem after I bought it. Life is to meet a deadline. I completed my work at a hospital yesterday and I'm going home today. I got up on an alarm set right to catch in time the flight, then found I missed morning coffee which affects my mental energy. I stayed in line at the terminal for Caribou Coffee, the brand local, watching the time to not be late, but arriving at the boarding gate, I found I came too early. Why do I do all things hastily? Thank you for watching.